Check, 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 check. I can't compete with what Dom just said, by the way. <laughs> hey, Sean. Uh, another great win for you. I'm wondering how you're feeling about your performance and, and uh, how you're reflecting on the, the fight so far. First round knockout, can't complain. Um, that feels good. Feels real good. I just saw you and Dom having a couple of words outside. I'm curious what you guys were talking about. Dom de Cruz is a, a, the dude's a living legend and he's still fighting right now. So just said congratulations and uh, that was it. Is this kind of what you were expecting to happen tonight in this fight? You know, it's like the next step up for you, but you wanted to still show that you can continue starching these guys and continue rising your level above it. Is this what you thought was going to happen, first round knockout? Yeah, uh, to be honest, anytime I get in the octagon, I feel like it's going to be a first round knockout because I just feel like anybody I fight has never fought somebody like me. And I know a lot of people say that, but it's just, I think it's true when I stand in there. Pipe has never seen someone like me. He's never felt that speed. So... I, I, I did see that playing out like that. And I want to thank myself for looking at the clock and seeing how much time was left. Because some people, Daniel Cormier, my last fight, he's like, oh my God, he's looking at the clock. Like, it's like, what are, what are, you, ta what are you talking about, dude? If, yeah, I want to look at the clock. If I didn't look at the clock, I wouldn't know how much time I have left. I land a big shot. I don't know how much time I got left. I got to know, if, should, I, should I empty my tank and try to take this dude out? Or should I wait and then have the rest of the fight save my energy? You know, so that kind of bugged me the, 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 that I kept bringing that up. Oh, he looked at the clock. Oh, he looked at the clock. It's like, dude's a double champ. It's like, you, yeah, what's your IQ? Your fight IQ? Is that not, you know what I mean? You think LeBron James is going to fucking drive the ball down the court and not look at the clock? It's amateur. I feel like DC's getting it from everyone this week. Don't say stupid shit. It's hard, though. That's a hard, hard job. I couldn't do that, his job. I could not sit up there and commentate that many fights and do his job. I would sound like a complete idiot. So... So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're one of these guys who I think as soon as you step in the cage and you win your fight, people are already talking about the next one, right? Like, who's he going to fight next? Who's going to fight next? For you, is there a name? I know that Adrian Yanez was someone you spoke about, but for you sitting there right now, is there anyone on your mind? No. I'm, I'm, I don't not want to. I fought three times last year, three times this year. I feel like every day I just have a f the fight coming up. So I'm just going to enjoy this and uh, try to not book a fight and just enjoy being with my family and my little princess. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll fight in March, April. Who, who will it be? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. As long as the Sugar Show is fighting, I don't really think people care too much who, who I'm fighting. Uh, first time you're at a press conference this week, the whole, the whole thing, does it feel like, I said about raising the level in your fights, does it feel like you're starting to raise your level in the promotion, right? You're starting to become one of the bigger names. I know you already have been, but does this week feel like you're taking that to the next level? Yeah, you know, the press conference was really cool. I planned on uh, going there and kind of stealing the show, and I think I did that. Uh, I'm in the fight business. A lot of these guys are in the fight game. I'm in the fight business, and I just happen to be really good at fighting, so... You know, I'm just enjoying this whole process. And just to go off of that, obviously you and Cody got into it at the press. I'm wondering if you saw his fight tonight and what you thought of it. Yeah, I did. You know, Cody's also, you know, a legend in, in his own right. And, and I'm not going to sit up here and say anything negative about him. He's probably going to have a rough couple of days, couple of weeks, whatever it's going to be. Nothing really to say about it. Thanks, Sean. Congrats, Sean. Thank you. Uh, just that you mentioned the DC thing, and I find that this is sort of a trend with you. Do you does it almost make you funny the way that people try to nitpick you and like all the little little holes they're looking for to, to sort of point to? I've always felt like DC wants me to lose. I just don't. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I just sat with down with him the other day, and you know, it's not like we're, he doesn't like me personally. I just feel like he kind of wants to see me lose. I don't know what it is. If I remind him of a young John Jones. But uh, for some reason, I feel like he wants me to lose, and, and, and there's certain things he says when he's commentating. But also, like I said, commentating would be a really hard job, and I don't, I, maybe I'm just taking it personal and uh, being a pussy. Sure, I, just, I get that need more on like a broader scale, just in general. The MMA fan base, people in the MMA world, it seems like people really try to nitpick anything they can find from you. Is that something you've noticed? That means I'm doing it right. If, I, if everyone just loved me, then I probably wouldn't be as big as I am. I think there's only probably one person that everyone loves, and that's Ty, two of us, two of us, so Ty, two, whatever, you know what I mean. You got it. I think he's the only one. How could you not like that guy? But for me, you know, I can see how people don't like, you know, they, they, they don't like me, but I guarantee they watched me tonight. I guarantee they did not turn, 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 the, turn the TV, they didn't get up to go to the bathroom, 
They weren't. They probably weren't even eating or drinking. I bet they were locked into that TV when I was fighting. Well, to piggyback off that, you actually now with this one tonight, tied for the second most knockouts in bantamweight history in the UFC. Is that wild to you to already have that? Yeah, that is pretty crazy because you know I still got. 15, 20 fights left in my career, I would say. Some, something around there. That might be a lot. But, uh, yeah, that, that is pretty crazy. Well, how many – what am I at and how, what's Five. the record? Five. And yeah. the record's seven, I believe. Well, I knocked out Thomas twice, so I'm at six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last one from me. You mentioned the rib injury in the cage, or Rogan did, and you talked about it. What happened and how bad was it? Like, how close did it really get? I literally think if he would have taken me down and I tried to get up, I, I don't know what would have happened. I, I didn't spar for the last three weeks. I was grappling, um, you know, and, and the guy had a body lock. on. My, I, he had my back, had a body lock. I went to turn. He squeezed at like, the same time. Nothing crazy, just grappling. And uh, my rib just, I don't, I don't really know exactly what happened, but rib, rib injuries, if you've ever had a rib injury, they're just so annoying and they, they take a while. But, uh, you know, I let it, let it chill for about a week, just ran and hit mitts and then tried to grapple again that next week and, and couldn't do the simplest grappling. So I, the la for the last three weeks, I didn't grapple at all. No grappling, didn't even test it, didn't even want it, didn't do any clinch work, didn't do anything. I came into this fight planning on him not being able to touch me and just being confident and trusting what I put it, the work I put in. Um, so, you know, that was, that was really, you know, and, and I'm proud of myself for having the mindset to be able to come in here and, and just know that. Sure, right here. Uh, the story coming out of your last fight was you set all these records for like total output in a fight. The first round, as long as it lasted, you, you seemed much more patient in there to pick your shots. Was that a product of not being able to spar or did you come in here knowing that you would probably kind of approach this fight a lot slower? No, that, the, the reason I had that high of an output against Chris is because he just walked forward like a punching bag. The dude did not take a step back. He literally walked forward for 14 and a half minutes, and I was bouncing my hands off his face. You know, Paiva didn't I, – I plan on Paiva pressuring me and, and coming forward, and I think that's what his game plan was, but it's a lot harder to do against me when you get in there. Like, you can say I'm going to get in there and pressure him, um, but it, it was he, he had trouble doing it. I don't know. I just – um, I felt every fight's going to be different, and if someone's going to conti like continuously walk forward, I, I have the the gas tank, and I can do the out put the output out to to bounce my hands off their face for that long. But I didn't need to tonight. What were you guys saying to each other at the end? I saw you guys kind of hugging it out. I just said you're a tough dude. Just keep fighting. But I I just you know said it was nothing but respect for him and and anybody I fight. I feel the same way. I feel like that with every anybody on the UFC roster. Um, you know, just told him to keep fighting, and he's tough. And finally, when, when they ra raised your hand and they announced that you were the winner, your eyes were closed and you kind of looked like you were soaking it in and then you opened it. You opened your eyes, you were looking up. What was going through your mind? Yeah, I've done that the majority of my fights. I like to just, you know, if you, it's easier to go inwards when you're not taking all this in. And I just, you know, closed my eyes and really was f just enjoying that and feeling, you know, here in Bruce and just really just taking in the moment. There's Sean right here. Uh, Sean, if on Monday they have a number next to your name, what should your fans do with all their unranked champ merchandise? Well, it actually works out nice because the unranked champ, it's still, I'm 15 and 0 right now. The jerseys, the, sh jer the shirts, all everything says 15. And if I'm ranked 15, it, it'll all be all right. It'll make sense. That was smart thinking. Um, another question, uh, Dana White did an interview and he said, you know, like, we're taking our time with Sean O'Malley. He's not Hamza Chimaev, was the example he gave. Was that fair, or did you feel like, oh, you know, I think I could be Dana? I, Dana's opinion doesn't, isn't going to, um, you know, that's his opinion. I'm not going to take anybody's opinion personal, so if, if that's what he thinks, he's the boss. You know, I'd be, I'm just going to listen to Dana. He, don't want, he wants me to fight someone else, I'll fight someone else. If he doesn't, you know, what he does with Ch Chimaev is, is what he does. I, I didn't take it, take it wrong at all. One of the things, obviously, you know, like you want more money for those other fights with the ranked guys and the bigger names. How often do you and your management, you know, send that email along like, hey, can we renegotiate? I learned to not talk about fighter pay or any of that, so. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate Sean, it. In the back. You mentioned in the post-fight interview that you'd watched a bunch of Canelo fights, and that's what inspired <laughs> you to sort of finish the way that you did. 
Could you sort of expand upon that a little bit? Is Canelo somebody who you take inspiration from or look up to in any way? Kind of. I mean, he's one of the best boxers in the world, probably of all time right now. Um, but, but really, we were watching Prince Nassim, Roy Jones, Canelo, just watching a bunch of different boxers. Highlights before before the fight it was something we do every fight day. You know, we watched some of the some of the greatest boxers and in, in kickboxers, MMA strikers. Um, there, we just watch their highlights and and get ready for the fight. But yeah, watching those boxers just unload those combinations up against the the rings, pretty cool. And it just it happened to work like that tonight. And what's your take on? There's a lot of MMA fighters crossing over into boxing and having some of these money fights. What's your take on all that? Yeah, I, uh, you know, boxing's a sweet sport. I, I don't really follow it closely, but I really enjoy boxing, j just boxing, sparring, and, and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I know they did what they did with Floyd and Connor it was f massive, and, and I think you have to be that massive of a star to do that. So, I, you know, I'd like to continue growing my star and, uh, you know, doing something like that down the road. And last for me, you had a great quote just now about you're in the fight business, not the fight game. What would your advice be to young, aspiring, up-and-coming fighters who want to sort of make the kind of money that you do and have the kind of star power that you have? Color your hair and get face tattoos. No, I'm just jokes. Um, I think what it comes down to is my performances, really. I don't think it's, you know, everything I do outside the octagon I enjoy doing, so I'm not forcing anything. You know, the, the YouTube, the vlogs, the podcast, the Twitch streams you know the merch like all that stuff is is part of the fight business what i'm talking about and it's just stuff i enjoy so it's i'm not really forcing it and i think some people just don't want to do that stuff so if they tried to it would look forced and it probably wouldn't be successful um so advice would just i mean be yourself i feel like i really am good at just being myself and i just happens to uh be, i'm good at a lot of things <laughs> thank you great performance thank you sean over here yep uh, Megan said you had a uh, video games were helping with your striking. How exactly did that come about? Uh, I think I just rationalized that in my head because I play so much video games. So I don't know if that's actually true. But I, I mean, I can see probably hand-eye coordination maybe. I've been playing video games since I was three years old. So I don't know if that's actually science or me just telling my girl, like, hey, I'm, I, it's, I'm training. All right. And what is your celebration tonight? Just going to go out with the boys, have a good time, uh, keep it low-key. Thanks, guys. E por hoje é isso de notícias. Espero que tenham gostado. Inscrevam-se no canal e ativem o sininho para receber sempre as notificações dos conteúdos assim que eles saem do forno.